Hello, it's Family Driver. Welcome to another video. Today you're joining me in a video where I will be changing parts in my car. So, uh, I believe I'm on original parts now. I bought this car when it had 19,000 miles and now I'm on 45. I believe they never been changed before and uh, from a couple of thousand of miles I drive was telling me that I need to change my parts in 3,000 miles. Uh, I never got down to any kind of alert, so I believe my parts sensor are still okay so I bought Ferodo DS2500 big shout out here to WG uh, Motor Parts they supplied me with the parts in really great price so I was hunting for these parts for uh, quite a bit I couldn't find them in really good price um, these guys actually supplied them cheaper than on eBay um, so head on to their website if you're interested in these parts or similar parts um, you might find really good deal on their website um, these are much better than the stock parts um, I had a chance to drive a car with these parts and it was night and day compared to mine you might say yes your parts are worn now so they would be better uh, however, I remember since day one when I had this car, uh, the parts were a big disappointment, I guess, in the department of the initial bite and um, the feel of the pedal. So I think with all M lights, uh, you have to really step on the brake um, to extract that braking power out of the pads, which isn't too bad actually. Uh, however, like I said, there is no initial bite and there's no much feel out of them and that doesn't give you a lot of confidence. So Ferodos should change that. When I drove my friend's car with these pads, uh, they were absolutely brilliant. So you get really nice initial bite. Um, so you press it and you feel they working straight away. Also, when I tried hard braking, I had to put maybe half of the power I would use in my car. So I think they are definitely a big improvement over the uh, normal pads. As you can see, it's very typical. Uh, I got up really early on Sunday morning to do the job before my kids get up and it started raining and there was no rain in the forecast. So let's move on to more difficult part. Let's go and change the pads. Uh, I'm going to put them on, then uh, I'm going to bed them in. And after a couple of days, I'm gonna give you my feedback. How do I feel about them on my car? First of all, let's open the bonnet. Now you need 10 mm socket to open this plastic bit. Uh, you only turn it slightly just to unlock it. There is a clip on the left hand side which you have to squeeze to release it. So next you open a cap on the brake fluid uh, reservoir. You need to do it to release the pressure uh, in the system. So basically when you fitting in new parts, which are obviously thicker than the old ones, you will have to push the calipers back in and without opening it, you wouldn't be able to do it. You have to lift your car Unfortunately, at that point, I realized that my hydraulic jack doesn't fit under the car anymore because my car is lowered. So I had to park my car on a big pieces of timber um, just to make it a bit higher. Before you get to removing the pins, it's worth to give it a squirt of uh, WD-40 or something similar uh, just to make it easier. For this job you will need a punch out tool, um, they only cost a couple of quid and they are an absolute essential. Uh, I try to use a, a drill bit to take the pins out and unfortunately I failed. So don't waste your time, get the proper tool, it only cost a couple of quid and it's available at Halfords or uh, any other similar place. So now you have to remove two pins. Uh, which holds metal plate, uh, which uh, stops your pads um, from uh, falling out. So once the plate is removed, you can take out your old pads. So as you can see, uh, you might need to uh, push it a bit one way and another 
just to uh, push the caliper in and make uh, a bit more space to take it out. As you can see the pads still had quite a bit of uh, life in them so um, but yeah I'm quite happy I've changed them at this point. I also use a bit of uh, copper grease at the back plate uh, just to uh, stop any squealing. As you can see when fitting in a new pad because they are thicker uh, it might be difficult to push them in. Um, so what you want to do is you might want to use the old pad, uh, slide it in and then uh, push and pull to push the caliper in so you have more space. Next thing to do is to reinstall the uh, pin and then fit in the metal plate uh, which will hold your new pads in place. You have to remember that one of the sides of the front and rear will have the wear sensors installed. So what you have to do basically is you have to remember to reconnect the sensor when you're reinstalling the pads. Next on your list to do is to um, fit in the first pin and reinstall the metal plate which will hold your pads in place. Uh, then you install bottom a pin and that's job done. I found it not that difficult and this is the first time I was doing it. You probably have to allocate about 20-25 minutes per wheel. Oh, let's move to the fun part, testing. So after having a hoon for a good hour and a half now, I would say um, brakes were definitely the right choice. So Ferrodos DS2500 feel much more responsive than the standard pads. Um, you've got that initial bind uh, and there is a nice feel to it as well when you're braking. You don't have to push it so hard. So uh, definitely worth upgrading. Um, so uh, definitely a big shout out to the guys I bought it from. Go and check their websites again because I found um, they were cheaper than eBay. So I'm going back to driving now, so see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.